progress. One word bearing many stories. Our story begins with understanding what you need today in order to focus on solutions for tomorrow. Progress means transforming your workflow into the digital world, making innovative architecture interactive, and modern fabrication more efficient. Our modular facade solutions minimize risks and provide maximum flexibility on site. Thinking of events that cannot always be foreseen. Progress is not only thinking about what people can see, but also what they can hear or not hear. Progress is new intelligence for commercial buildings, as well as the most private spaces. In the end, it's not about what we make or the goals we strive for. It's about seeing this world, our world, through the eyes of others. Enabling you to shape our lives and work for decades to come. Experience progress. What are some of the traits that you have carried forward? The business that I look after now essentially all got started uh, by me. The legacy that I have is, of course, the family name, the upbringing that I was given by my parents, and of course, the financial resources that came in by way of the investment in my company. But in terms of the business, uh, our various family businesses um, that were there, for instance, Cement, which was our big business, got divested. I was involved with that business for about 10 years, but then now uh, we sold off our interest and other businesses also of the family, either they were divested or they are presently being managed by the other partner who was there. Uh, even if you know our family shareholding is there in it even now, but the management is not uh, with us. So in that sense, uh, you may say that uh, most of what we are doing presently in the space of hospitality, real estate or healthcare and education is all started by me ever since I started working. Of course, um, the family has been in business for more than 100 years. Uh, so naturally, there is a legacy of um, trust that probably is there in the society because one has been involved in business. Uh, we have been a family deeply interested in the arts, music, literature, art, architecture, archaeology, heritage, etc. So all of that, um, different members of my family have been patrons of it, have been interested in it as scholars, have been interested in it as you know, students. And so, um, there has been that influence in my growing up years and uh, as any such influence, uh, some of that stuff rubs off and I'm sure uh, a lot of that I bring to the table in my work also, maybe not very consciously, but uh, it comes through. So this is uh, broadly what I would say about the legacy. Family has been, uh, though we came from Rajasthan, uh, long years ago but uh, for several generations we have been domiciled here in Kolkata born and brought up here and so uh, we have also imbibed a lot of its local culture integrated quite deeply with the community here played an active part in many community activities in Bengal sort of have ingrained ourselves as Calcutans, if I may say so. What started off with real estate has ventured, uh, divested, you, you know, you have sort of uh, digressed into hospitality, education. Uh, I can understand that's being part of the culture, you know, that there's a background. So obviously, you are, there's a gleaming towards it. But 
venturing into these projects uh, what were your first thoughts or what were uh, what were your first thoughts as, as to what you wanted to build so my involvement in real estate was completely accidental serendipitous i may say i was out of college uh, i was kind of practicing with my father when one of his friends was moving out of kolkata he had a small plot of land and he wanted to develop a building on it which he could sell as apartments because in those days this is way back in 1982 it was not easy to sell the land uh, calcutta was not exactly a happening place as such so he was advised that why don't you make a block of apartments and you might be able to sell off the apartments so i happened to be sitting on that conversation so my father said you're out of just about i was at actually not out of college i was still in college but i would have completed my college the following year and uh, he said why don't you do this project so there i was uh, i started that and that's how it happened that's the first project i did it's a small project 20000 odd square feet of development 20 odd apartments and because uh, it turned out well in the sense in those times it was built within built reasonably well got sold off also the person whose land was there got a little more money than he probably anticipated we were able to save some money so it gave me the confidence to then venture and do the next one in that process i got kind of interested in it uh because i started enjoying the process of architecture and design since my family being involved in the arts i had that kind of inclination but i never knew that i would be able to use it because at that time our business was running petrol pumps and and cement none of which really required any artistic uh, sort of involvement but uh, personally location when it comes to development location is a very very important the factor what some of the parameters or the developer or you would look for in a location first of all we are a calcutta headquartered company so we look for projects in this region and most of our projects are in bengal and then we have ventured to some neighboring states like for instance we have a project in sikkim a hotel project coming up there we have a large project in patna in bihar and we have one in chatisgarh so these are the places we have actually done projects location when you say specific to a particular spot or a plot well i think this is all a matter of chance it's not like uh, if you have a particular location in mind you will necessarily find a land at the right price or with the right opportunity you know we didn't have that kind of uh, money to buy prime real estate you know strategic locations so what we did was we entered into a lot of joint ventures uh, with people who had lands and when you do that you take the land that comes with it so you, you try to devise a project that is suitable so sometimes it was a office building sometimes it was a residential building sometimes it was a commercial building Uh, or or a mall it depend on what the location was suitable for for say calcutta you know if you if you look at if you look at only calcutta market how was real estate uh, being affected with the with the current pandemic in general adversely like it must have elsewhere as well i don't yeah. think it's any yeah. different people are reticent to uh, make investment Invest- at a time like this offices as you know a lot of work from home so demand for offices are down retail is down because people are not shopping out so much or going out so much uh but i think um, for residential real estate there has been some some silver lining also people are looking at more space now that they are confined to their homes so many families that were are uh, living together as joint families are probably looking for more space and therefore one brother or one son is wanting to move out to because now that everyone is working from home and uh, <clears throat> you're pretty much in that space you you probably need more space so in that sense there has been a demand for some ready ready to move in kind of 
spaces mm-hmm. the other thing that has happened is because the pandemic has thrown up so much of uncertainty the buyer is looking for more credible developers to invest in and therefore people who have had a good track record who have delivered in the past to them the demand has actually moved up even though the overall demand may actually be lower mm-hmm. uh, but it is what i would call bunching of demand towards well known developers moving across from sectors that you know you are you are uh, you have developed across sectors what are some of the technical or commercial challenges or you know like the design or technical challenges of moving from sector whether it's real estate or it's commercial retail hospitality education see uh, every location like we do i wouldn't say we do a totally bespoke luxury housing we do what i could what we call the high income housing here and we do the mid income housing and we do the low income housing mm-hmm. now if all three categories the requirements are slightly different i mean there is in a low income housing you have a one bedroom apartment which is hardly 400 square feet so it's really tight and uh, in a high income we have a two bedroom apartment which is about 15 1600 square feet so it's a and then the use up obviously requires different uh, kinds of facilities and specifications also change so that we are comfortable with building what is suitable for a particular location and a particular market and we have been over these last 25 30 years that we've been working we've worked through these entire uh, i would say spectrum of of different uh, categories and uh, we tailor make it to the requirement townships that you have developed they're usually large projects with long gestation periods the challenges are many because not all of them will sell at one point you know it sells over a period of time how do you look at uh, finance how do you juggle finances because while you're building a township you'd like to get into some other projects you know so how do you juggle finances and how do you how do you ensure that you have a ready uh, a sort of a plethora of buyers for your for the township projects we have not done too many townships we have done small ones like 100 acres 80 acres and mm-hmm. a lot of the them were plotted developments where you were not building too much you were building uh, you were selling plots and in, if some people wanted some houses you built it for them a lot of people bought the plots and built the houses themselves sometimes much later so the largest project we did was in siliguri which was around 400 acres mm-hmm. and that land belonged to another friend of mine who was not a builder so he decided to partner with us and do the project so we didn't have to make a large financial outgo of uh, up front because the land already was his and that was his also for a very long time so uh, that sold over a period of 7 8 years uh, so it was okay because uh, we were able to move it in that direction smaller projects which are 80 100 acres don't have that long a span usually uh, you can you can do most of the selling in about 4 to 5 years and which is which is fine because even a building is takes about 3 years 4 years to do mm-hmm. so it is just a little longer than that your the pro- properties that you built have some unique elements in it what is the kind of briefs that you give your architects well again as i said uh, or we don't work with one architect we work with almost every well known architect not every but many well known architects including some iconic architects like korea and doshi and the brief is totally specific to that particular project there is no common brief mm-hmm. yes there is some common values that we as a group stand for so for instance we would like to see that increasingly so i won't say that we did this very effectively 20 years ago but now we are very focused on it being a green project with reasonably good sustainability practices so that's one the other is that we do uh, since i'm also interested in that uh, want a high level of aesthetics in the development we try to incorporate art a lot in our projects so of course it gives us more scope in hospitality where 
you can do a lot more art installations, art on the walls. In, in other real estate projects, it is somewhat less because mostly the interiors are done by the buyer. So you do some things in the lobbies and then you do some sculpture in the gardens, etc. One more question. Uh, you, were, uh, you have tied up with Taj for five more properties. Uh, at a time when hospitality is, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, abysmally low, you know, in terms of, uh, how are you? How are those projects going to progress? So that's a million-dollar question. <laughs> we are talking at a very difficult time, but uh, as any such pandemic has shown in the past, it will pass, and certainly we pray and hope it will pass. Yeah. So, uh, if it will pass, I'm sure hospitality is one of those human instincts that. People want to move and they want to travel. Uh, I think all of you must have, and as much as I, uh, we have what is known as a Zoom fatigue or virtual fatigue setting. Yes. Right. We want to talk to people like this. I'm sure it would be nicer if I could meet you or you could meet me. Yes. And I think we will come back to that no sooner as we uh, can do it. Now, of course, we have difficulties in making that happen in the present environment, but. Uh, I, I, I hope and pray that this is not going to last too long. Besides, um, while that announcement did come uh, in the middle of a pandemic, but it was a work in progress for some years. And all the projects that we have work, working with them or are working with them are in um, execution for the last three, four years. You have to face this difficulty, but God willing, we'll overcome it. and. Things will be fine.